Are you suffering from insomnia, headaches, depression, lack of concentration, changes in memory, restlessness, anxiety, or nausea? If you're like me and you answered yes to any of these or all of these, your body may be overly sensitive to EMF exposure. Things like cell phones, Wi-Fi routers, Bluetooth, computers, power lines, and microwaves all emit non-ionizing radiation. So what are the danger levels you may ask in this? Well, let's not make this video any longer or more boring than it has to be. But since you asked, EMF is measured in units called volts per meter. The higher the measurement, the stronger the EMF. Now, no known health risks are expected to occur if your exposure to EMF falls below the levels in this guideline. But what happens when you put all your devices in one room and you're exposed to over 250 volts per meter across 10 to 12 hours per day, seven days a week? Damn, I'm gonna need one of these. Probably why I'm divorced with no friends and have Cheeto hands every day. So what are we gonna do about this? because we can't go on living this way. What you see behind me is the makings of a Faraday cage. Put this together with just some spare wood around the house and my computer equipment is going to sit inside this cage. It will be used to enclose and block the magnetic fields from escaping. And in here, is the material or signal blocking fabric that just came in the mail. Purchased on Amazon, link is in the description. So let's go ahead and open this. So here, is the EMF shielding fabric. This fabric is made of 20% copper and nickel and 80% polyester, which can block signals from 10 megahertz to five gigahertz. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna wrap around my Faraday cage. Oh yeah, this is good. So this is going to go around my Faraday cage and it's going to trap all the EMF signals from escaping and penetrating my body every day. So I don't need that shit anymore. Let's see if it works. Let's turn this on. Put it behind here. Look at that. Wow. Wow. I think we have a winner. All right, look at that. Being exposed to this every day, seven days a week. And now it's blocked. So let's go ahead and finish this build. I'm going to attach this to my Faraday cage, which is this. My computer is gonna sit inside here. My electronics are gonna sit inside here. And you're probably wondering, what about Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi is gonna be completely cut off. Well, I don't use Wi-Fi on my computer. I use an ethernet cable, so I'm not concerned about that. Bluetooth, I guess I'll have to figure that as I go along. But let's get this build finished up.
right, guys, here is my Faraday cage. It's just like wrapping a Christmas box. I'm gonna put my computer and all my electronics inside here and it's going to block all the electromagnetic frequencies coming out of it. Now again, natural electromagnetic fields created by the sun are 200 volts per meter. Power mains are 100 volts per meter. TVs and computer screens are 10 volts per meter. TV radio and transmitter, six volts. Mobile phones are at six volts. But what happens when you combine all that together in one room, you are way above what is recommended for exposure. Now, when I put this electromagnetic radiation tester inside the Faraday cage, the fields get blocked. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put my computer in there. We're gonna put my electronics in here and we're gonna get back to a healthy state of living. So on top of building this, what we also need is a grounding clip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, right here. We're gonna to need to ground this Faraday cage. The electricity collected on the shield is going to need to get discharged somewhere. So we're going to ground it to our surge protector. So the electricity that it captures will be transmitted from the box to the surge protector in a safe manner. So don't forget if you're building a Faraday cage to ground your shielding because it's gonna collect all that electricity and it needs a place to go. Check out some videos in the description on that. But let's go ahead and get this connected and get this set up. Let me show you my setup. So here is my computer that is going to be moved from where it's at and we're gonna place it inside this Faraday cage. Fortunately, I'm not gonna be able to watch any of the fancy lights and things like that anymore, but that's okay because we're emitting way too much EMF for this room. So let's go ahead and tear this apart and throw it inside this Faraday cage. All right, guys, so I have my computer and everything inside the Faraday cage. Let's go ahead and power it on. I can reach the power button. It's raised up a little bit down here. It's sitting on these, these planks so we can get some circulation in here and it's not completely against the wall. So we do have a few inches of, of airflow that's gonna be okay for it. Let's go ahead and close it up. All right guys, as you can see, I have my Faraday cage built. My computer's inside it. We'll take a look at the readings in a second. Remember that in my room that has all my computer equipment, I was pushing around 250 to over 300 volts per meter, which for me feels like an extremely high amount, which remember can cause things like insomnia or sleep disturbance, headaches, depression symptoms, tiredness, fatigue, lack of concentration, changes in your memory, dizziness, nausea, anxiety. So I put my equipment inside a Faraday cage to hopefully help combat those symptoms because probably like you guys on my computer, 12 hours a day, seven days a week, and I'm being exposed to levels that would be comparable to the sun. So let's go ahead and take a look at these readings. Remember I was around 250 when we started. We're at zero volts per meter on the electromagnetic field, which is the top one. And we're pushing around two or 1.9, well, between 1.9 and two milligauss 
on the magnetic field, which is a healthy range to be in. So that right there, guys, is my Faraday cage. Here is my grounding clip that goes into the wall outlet. And here's what it looks like inside the Faraday cage. So even at my computer screen, we're pushing around 14 volts per meter and around 2.8 milligauss for the magnetic field, which is a healthy range to be in. A lot better than 250, 300 volts per meter, which was coming from this equipment here. So let's throw my cell phone inside some of the EMF shielding material and see if it blocks the Wi-Fi and see if it blocks the cellular data. Because supposedly this material is supposed to block 2.4 gigahertz to 5 gigahertz. So in essence, my cell phone shouldn't be able to transmit a signal through this. So what you see on the screen is my cell phone that's linked to the computer. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the lock screen. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap my cell phone in this material and see what happens. And you can see the signal right there fading. Now, as you can see, the signal just dropped. So let's take it out of here. Signal came back. Let's cover it up. See if the signal fades and the signal fades. Now people often say you should get these blue lens filtered glasses that filter out harmful blue rays, but this shit isn't going to work compared to what you're seeing from this field tester. These glasses aren't gonna do anything for you when you're pushing as many volts per meter coming from your computer equipment. The best it's gonna do is filter from the computer screen, which still might be helpful, but it's not gonna solve the underlying issue if you're experiencing any of those symptoms from sitting at your computer at late hours at the night. Build yourself a Faraday cage, guys. The link to all the material will be in the description. Thanks again for watching. And my dog came in here completely ruining my video with his toy. All right, later, dude. So that does it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're suffering from any of those symptoms and you're at your computer for as many hours on end as I am, build yourself a Faraday cage Get rid of all that extra electromagnetic interference that may be causing negative side effects to your body because nobody wants to be surrounded with all that electromagnetic interference in their room. I have extra material now and I'm gonna go around shielding the rest of my room up and completely eliminate all unnecessary EMF and that is how you become an EMF minimalist.